Okay, hello everybody. So, um, those which have, those of you which have seen a few things on my channel will know I have a lot of interests. Uh, I'm interested in um, fundamental physics, topology, 3D printing, complexity, networks, and I think that these two things I'm holding in my hands are actually some of my favourite physical objects in the world. Um, they're actually the first two things I ever had 3D printed and I think that they relate all of those things, those um, topics of interest, together. My claim is that um, these two particular shapes um, are part of the processes which can teach us a lot about the formation of space, the formation of the universe, Big Bang, topology, I think that, and, and the growth of complexity in our universe in general. Now these might sound like really, really outlandish claims, but I think if you bear with me, you'll, you'll see. Um, because what, what essentially happened with both of these models, they're both generated in very similar ways, is that we just started with a simple little seed and a few little rules and a whole space and a whole list of tendencies of behaviour or rules came into existence. They weren't programmed in. I didn't tell, I didn't specify that I wanted a hyperbolic network or that I wanted so many of these corners and so many of these cross caps. No, these, these all just arose naturally um, out of the little rule that I put in. And with this one, this is special because it's so unpredictable. I mean, um, you can see how complex it is. The, the difference between the rules of these things is only a couple of bytes. There's only a very small difference in the rule code, but the outcome is magnificently different. I think that um, the basic essence of um, what I'm trying to say is simple but hard to believe. Um, it basically all comes down to the the fact that very, very, very simple rules can make very, very, very complicated things happen, okay? Now this is obviously true. Um, think about things like prime numbers or the rules of chess. Um, these are fairly simple things which make incredibly complex scenarios. Um, so in a way we have a kind of conscious grasp of it, but our intuition doesn't seem to have caught up. The reason why I think it's so fascinating is because it only involves those very very simple rules. Just a writer moving around, sometimes replacing a vertex with a triangle, sometimes flipping an edge around and sometimes just moving and um, it does all that purely deterministically I mean you can write the rules for a system like this in like this much space not complicated at all I'll show you okay so here is an actual video of the system evolving so the rewrite rules are at the top we started with a cube and at every time step one of these rewrite rules is applied. So just for example, um, if the writer, the black vertex, has none of its neighbors linked, then that means its surroundings correspond to the picture at the top left, which means that um, the writer should move along a red edge and a blue edge, and then its previous location is replaced with a triangle. Anyway, if you look at this uh, video a couple of times. I'm sure you'll understand the rewrite rules that are at work and they're incredibly simple and completely deterministic and we see them 
absolutely create this network. Now I'd like you to notice the parallel here with physics. I mean, it's just like in a Big Bang, where we started off with a single little point and through some simple rules, we generate some large structure. The fact is that we actually get an immensely large structure. And at the end of this video, I'll show you the network growing, not up to time step 300, like in my physical model, but beyond that. So somehow, through some tiny, tiny little rules, we're able to inject some, somehow kind of magically a kind of blueprint for some immensely complex structure. And the really interesting thing is that long-term, large-scale features of behavior start to occur, what's called emergent properties, okay? So think about the universe. Um, at the beginning, it was just like a load of um, really, really small kind of subatomic particles and things. Then you got some small atoms and everything was very hot. And then as things started to cool down, you got heavier and heavier atoms and things formed more and more complexity. And as that happened, basically as the system grew, and as parts near the edges were able to organize themselves into heterogeneous forms like planets, asteroids, whatever, then sort of local laws were able to be created, like the idea of life, for example. I mean, you don't seriously think that the, um, the whole kind of idea of DNA sequencing and everything was already pre-programmed into the program of the universe. It's, that would be a really inelegant way for the universe to be done, right? It's far, far more elegant to have these things sort of emerge naturally from the system. And I believe that this is what's happening in the universe all the time. For example, look at a waterfall and throw a stick in and try and predict where it's going to go, you'll have a really hard time because it's just so unpredictable. And sometimes you can be very surprised. Like I'm sure that someone observing planet Earth at a very fast time scale would be pretty surprised to suddenly see some amoeba or something start getting created under some rocks or something and then to, you know, uh, create a big civilization of wise apes or whatever it was supposed to be. Um, but this is something that actually happens all the time. This is something that you can observe through looking at systems like this. Now again, I want to stress, I'm not talking about this system in particular. This is just an example. There's so many more systems like this. But it seems like most people draw a really, really, really thick line between inanimate objects like rocks, chairs, blocks of metal, and animate objects like um, people, animals, etc. And the fact of the matter is, as far as we know, we came from rocks, we came from chemicals, there was a time when there was no organisms, there was just a load of rocks and chemicals, and somehow they mixed together in some kind of self-replicating form, and that eventually created us. And when you start looking at lots of complex systems, this idea, I mean, it seems non-intuitive to begin with, but after you've seen enough complex systems, it's no longer non-intuitive, it's second nature, you see it happen all the time. Um, surprising emergent qualities can occur when you have a large complex system. They can be kind of good qualities like the creation of some kind of new fascinating behavior like life, or they can be bad sort of calamities like something ends up going really boring or some 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 kind of animal goes extinct or something but the thing is it's surprising what about this as a model of a mind okay 
So the way this system actually works is that we have a single writer. I'm going to represent it with this little ball of, of white type, which is far too sticky. And it moves around. And as it shifts around, it does rewrite operations. Now, I don't know about you, but consciously, I, I seem like I can only think about one thing at a time. And I imagine my neural network is rewired somehow when I learn new skills, you know, when someone tells me a new phone number or whatever, somehow it's rewired. So this is, there's obviously parallels between that and this, okay. Um, so you can think of it as a model of data storage. Now there's something a bit missing here because this system evolves purely internally. The writer moves around in response to the surroundings of the writer and it has nothing to do with what's outside the network. It's kind of like some reclusive Leibniz or something working in isolation, just creating um, really intricate patterns without any um, kind of um, disturbance from the outside world. Okay, so another good question one could ask is, does this system remain complex when one runs the rule for more time steps? I just showed you a structure that you get from running the thing for 300 time steps. But here, you see the structure one gets after running the system for 10,000 time steps. And it's highly intricate. I mean, if one zooms in, on a particular part, on these all sorts of details. Also, it seems as if different parts of this structure, like, look different. There is a kind of heterogeneity, much like um, the way the human, a human head looks different to a human foot. The system can grow structures of naturally heterogeneous parts remarkable that all this is encoded in those tiny little rules when you start from a cube. Anyway, so this is the structure we get after 10,000 time steps. What about after 10 billion time steps? Who knows? Will the system end up going boring? Will it create a system as intricate and complex as this forever?